Hey everyone, Game Horizon here. Hope you're having a nice day. So 2016 is about to end and as a gamer I'm really excited about the next year. But first, let's take a quick look at 2016. So I want to make two videos and share my favorite games and movies and TV series of 2016 with you guys. And I want you guys to do the same thing for me in the comment section, of course, if you have time for it. Originally, I was planning to do a top 10 or top 15 video, but I didn't because I like all of these games and it was really hard to put them in order. Before we start, I need to say something. I'm not making this video to dive deep in every game or take a close look at them or anything like that. No, I'm just gonna give you guys my thought on the game and how I feel about them and my experience with those games in 2016. Anyway, let's get into the list. Number 1 Space Engineers Ok, where should I start? I love creating stuff. If I didn't, I wouldn't be on YouTube making videos. And I'm really thankful of Kin Software for making this amazing game. If it wasn't because of this game and Kin, my channel wouldn't have taken off. I've spent more than 1000 hours into this game, making a spaceship, bases, land loco, and many many more. And I still want to play more and create more. There is something about this game that every time they release a new update for it, it just makes me more hyped about the future of this game and just want to play more. Anyway, I just can't wait to see what they are planning for 2017 and all of those new blocks. Can't wait for them. Two, Imperion Galactic Survival. Another early access game with amazing dev behind the project. I know this is going to sound really weird, but in my opinion this game is one of the best survival game out there. I always want a good and feature rich survival mode in a Space Engineers, but a Space Engineers is more of a creating game rather than a survival game. So having a game to fill that gap, well of course I'm gonna love it. By the way, a few weeks ago I have uploaded a comparison video comparing each part of these games. So if you want to check that out, please click on the video. Three, World of Worship. There is something about this game that I always want to play it in morning, like one, one or two hours before leaving for work while drinking a morning coffee. It just makes me happy and yes, I have two other jobs, I need to make money to survive. Hopefully in the next few years, I can really focus on YouTube and become a full-time YouTuber. Anyway, we went off-road really bad. Sometimes I like to play World of Worship alone and just have fun. But sometimes I'll join my friend and we'll try to be really tactical and coordinated. Teamwork finest until the other team just kick our asses. The thing that really surprised me is that this game is free to play. Though yes there are some microtransactions but you can still play the game and be badass without paying a single penny. But for such an amazing game dropping a few bucks in the game, well, it's not a crime. Oh, I can't wait for the next Halloween. This year Halloween was crazy.
4 Subnautica Okay, probably one of the scariest games that I have ever played. The thing that makes this game so scary is that this game is not a scary game. In the scary games, you know that you're gonna get scared. But in Subnautica, it's, a, it's just a different story. It's the ocean, it's the unknown and the things that are in the darkness of ocean that makes this game so amazingly scary. The true sense of exploration, survival, the fact that you are alone in this watery based planet and the more you play and the more the depth update the game, you will learn that this is not a normal planet. And there are a lot of mystery lurking beneath the ocean, waiting to be discovered by the player. These are the things that make this game truly a masterpiece and I can't wait for the next year and more updates to start swimming again and again. Oh, 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 I don't wanna see what is that. 5. Mirror's Edge Catalyst There are a lot of games out there that immediately gives you that adrenaline rush at the same time be relaxing and jaw dropping. There is a time that you are running for your life, a few minutes later, you are standing and enjoying the view with amazing music playing in the background. And you are saying to yourself that, damn I wish I could have lived there. I think DICE did an amazing job with the game but not a lot of people share the same thought. I think many players were so hyped about this game and that alone caused a lot of expectation and when it failed to deliver those expectations, it made a lot of players disappointed. But I wasn't expecting anything crazy, the only thing I wanted was the same good old feel that I had when I was playing the old one, the original one. And it did deliver that, so yeah, I'm, I really love the game and I want to play it again. Number 6, Battle of One, another masterpiece from DICE. I knew it, that the DICE was gonna go with World War One. One of my favorite YouTubers, uh, Jack Frag, did a video on what time period next Battlefield is going to be, and he created a poll. In the poll there were World War One, World War Two, Vietnam era, Modern Warfare, Close Future, or like Fall Future, Sci-Fi, Spaceship, Laser, and portrait like that. And I voted for World War One. But weirdly enough, World War I got the least votes. And after a few months later, they announced that the next battlefield is going to be set in World War I and it's going to be called Battlefield 1. I think it was a live stream. What an amazing game. It looks stunning thanks to First by 3 and all the devs that worked on hard on this game. It's the same good old battlefield that I used to know and play for hours and hours. The only thing I hate are those fracking flak cannon that raped the plane, they need to be nerfed, but then again, the plane are going to rape the player. I don't know, whatever, I just love the game. We have lost objective apples.
that's wasting boy. In case you haven't noticed. You good to go yet? Number seven, Deus Ex Mankind Divided. I love role playing games and in our case Deus Ex. You guys have no idea how, no idea how much I love this series or franchise. Spoiler alert! There was a mission where you had to speak to a heavily augmented girl and all the augmented people that they were there, they were worshipping her. Did I say that right? Anyway, and she was about to do the same exact thing that happened in the last game, uh, Human Revelation. Basically makes every augmented people go nuts and basically created an apocalypse again. With these kind of games, you can approach your target in a different way and finish the mission in a different way as well. Now, in my playthrough, I've tried my best to avoid killing and try to be as stealthy as possible. And I always try to talk. If it didn't work, then I pull out my guns or just find a hidden way. Level design in this game is just perfect. Anyway, as, as I was saying, I found my way through to the, to the room that she was in it and I hacked the door, got inside the room and after a few stressful minutes of trying to stop her by talking sense to her, finally managed to stop her from creating a disaster and then I started crying. I don't know what happened. It wasn't a sad moment or anything like that. I don't know what happened but after finally making her realize that she was wrong the whole time, it gives me goosebumps and the feeling that I had it made me cry. It was such an amazing moment. Unfortunately, the game just ended. It was like they ran out of time or they just have to cut the content for the future. It just didn't feel right. And some weird microtransaction for a single player game seems really stupid. I mean, come on. And at the end, the art style is just amazing. I can't say anything bad about it. The graphic looks beautiful, though it's not very well optimized. And my favorite place was this area. Your parts together. I'm fine. How close did you get me to our contact's location? I was in Unit 237. Jesus, Jensen. I didn't put you on his doorstep. Residential sector should be just ahead of you. Me, I'm gonna switch to autopilot, have a coffee. Let me know if things get interesting. You must submit to an identification scan. Oh, my God. 